<sighs> morning guys it's in insomnia 101 <laughs> all right so i'm just gonna get right into it i don't know there has to be people at least on my page that do this i know people that study law of attraction okay this is like super interesting and I haven't really said anything about this like subject, but it's actually really important in life. Um, at least that's what I believe. You can believe whatever you want. Um, but I do go by it as much as possible. So this is super interesting, right? I don't know if people know this stuff. Ready? I'm going to blow your mind if you don't. And if you want to look into it and believe this. Okay. So. Our reality. Okay. Our reality is based on our beliefs, our emotions. Crap. Our beliefs, our emotions, feelings, and thoughts. Wow. Like I haven't been doing this for years. <laughs> okay. So. We, what we think gives us a beliefs as well. Um, they can be negative or positive, but they can turn into limited beliefs, which is when we'll be like, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I'll never be able to do that. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I'm not that type of person. Like, you know. So it's like you're holding yourself back and putting, um, sorry, it's morning guys. And you're putting resistance against something that you don't even know if you could do. So it's like, it's like, I don't know, say there's like a really good job, all right? And you're like, oh, I could never be that good at it. Or, oh, I don't have a college degree. They would never pick me. It's like, you don't even know though, because you're not even going after it right? So, so this is wicked cool. So because of how we were brought up, we were conditioned into a certain way. Okay? We have certain beliefs that either came from society or our parents or our teachers or school teachers and friends and, you know, whatever. Um, and they become our beliefs. Our internal feelings is what our external reality actually is. So it sucks though because our conscious mind could be thinking that we're worthy of whatever or maybe not even realizing it. But when we're growing up, we tend to program um, from the conditions that we're being, like we're seeing, okay? So if your parents were a certain type of way, you're going to have a certain type of programming. Like they say, addiction is a disease. I don't care if people hate me for this. Addiction is not a disease, okay? It is not a choice. Well, it is a choice. But it's not a fucking disease. It's not genetics. It's nothing like that. I don't believe that it is. Um, I had no... My parents were not addicts. They had no problems with drugs or anything like that alcohol and I grew up to be an addict so I mean I had a huge problem with drinking um I did other drugs but it was mainly drinking and maybe some benzos but as soon as I got pregnant like I stopped but then I continued um I think I calculated it to be four years of sobriety <laughs> But in between, like, Dawson being 11 and, well, Dawson being born um, and him being 11, from him being born up until, like, three, I didn't drink. And then from, like, three to five, I didn't drink, but I still was, and it wasn't to the extent it ever was before because obviously then I had a kid and I had to take care of him and you know stuff like that like I wasn't an irresponsible parent but like I was still having a drink here and there or I'd go out and have one at the bar at like karaoke or you know stuff like that not like getting a belligerent and being an idiot like I used to so even though like I was still drinking I don't consider it you know being an addict type 
way where I got out of it and was able to get out of that type of mentality. See what I mean? Choice, addiction, mentality. Um, but so even though it could be more sobriety time, I still was drinking and I like don't drink at all now. Like at all. Like when Alicia comes over, I'll drink. <laughs> That's about it. Um, but not, like I said, to the extent of where it, I would say I need to not count it as sobriety time. Um, or whatever. Whatever. I don't fucking care. Anyways, so addictions. It, it, it's, a, I believe it's an, an attachment style. I believe that, you know, when we're growing up, we are formed into the conditions that our environment is and what we see as we're, you know, in childhood and all that. Um, so I believe that if you're seeing a parent drinking and doing drugs and doing this and doing that, it can either be a void to feel like the only way you're going to have that certain parent love you is to try to follow in their footsteps or when they see their parents or parents, whatever, um, get a certain type of way, they see them turn to drugs or alcohol. So it's really the environment, not really, you know, whatever. Like, it could be their friend doing something and they try it. Like, I don't know, I guess there's an addictive pattern or addictive way, but it's not a disease. <laughs> it's not. And people can yell at me about this all they want. It's not going to change my opinion. It's not. Like, I just think it's it's an excuse, honestly. And I dealt with an addict really, really, really bad. Really, really bad. And myself and other people for, like, 15 years. So you can't convince me. Um, and if you want to bitch about it in the comments, go ahead. Because I'm not even going to pay attention to it. Because that's not the point of the fucking video. Anyways, so... <sighs> It's really interesting how our beliefs growing up from things that have happened with our parents mold us into who we are and how we think and what our beliefs are as of today. But it's it's not hard to reprogram your mind. It really, I mean, it can be for some people. I was, when I was, when I was living at my old apartment, I used to walk my dog. Like, in the morning time, I'd practice this stuff all the time. Like, I'd listen to all these, like, YouTube people and, like, speakers and how to do this type of, um, you know, stuff, the law of attraction um, thing. And I could feel, and I still do this to this day, I can feel me be able to tap into my subconscious mind. And when I was doing that, and I was actually doing good then, not that I'm not doing good now, but like just shit happened and I, I got off, got off track. So, um, I can feel like my subconscious mind and then like I could feel like a deeper sense, but I'm awake. I'm not meditating. Then I can find like a deeper sense. And then I found out that there's something called a super subconscious mind. And that's kind of like where it comes into play where like you wake up at the time that your alarm would usually go off, but you didn't have your alarm. That's like your super subconscious kind of thing. Um, your subconscious is like the wired thoughts. Okay, so think of your brain as a computer. Your your beliefs of when you were growing up is something that you thought of over and over and over again that it, it put a file in your um, computer files. You know what I mean? And it stays there until you can have that belief not there anymore. So a lot of us grow up thinking that we're not worthy. I mean, who doesn't? Like, it's still to this day, like, oh, I'm not worthy of love. Oh, I'm not worthy of that job. Oh, I'm not worthy of having a kid. You know what I mean? It's it's something of, like that. And maybe you don't even say it, but you still think it subconsciously, not even realizing it. Because consciously, you can think you're the shit. You know what I mean? But it's a lie to your subconscious because it knows how you really feel. And our subconscious mind of how we feel and our thoughts and our beliefs, like I said, are what make our external reality. So, for an example, if you think the world is out to get you, you're going to have situations and people and 
shit that's going to come into your life that's going to keep making you believe that, okay? If you feel like, you know, um, people only want you for sex, you're going to keep having people attract to you that only want sex from you. If you date the same kind of person and the same thing keeps happening over and over and over again and you're like what the fuck it's because you have that belief that it's gonna keep happening over and over and over again right ready this is like mind-blowing so as a kid right an example of how like a limited belief can come out of something that you would never think of. And this is why we have to work on our inner child because we don't even know this. So if you can go deep, 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 deep inside of your subconscious mind or your childhood with your inner child, you know, um, in meditation or however you can get there, um, past life, I wouldn't say past, past life regression because that's more of your past lives, not this life. Um, maybe EMDR, whatever those things are, um, to bring it to light. So, or you can talk to your inner child. Like, let your inner child out of, like, go play, be a kid. Like, I do it all the time. <laughs> but, um, and another way you can help heal your inner child is mother it or father it or whatever, the way you weren't. So... If you feel like you were neglected as a child, again, you're going to grow up feeling neglected by people or situations or whatever, but it's not your fault. I mean, you can't help how you feel growing up when you're helpless and hopeless and you, you know what I mean? But then in life growing up, we have to find our way back to love. Okay. So ready? Listen, this is actually really cool. Um, but it's sad, obviously for us. <laughs> So, uh, you're not worthy of love or if you feel like, how do I say this? This is like the type of thing for this. So if you see something that you really, 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 really want, um, whether it's a person, relationship, um, something at a store or clothes, like something, and it's like, Like, you really want it, right? And you think it's, like, too expensive. Like, instead, you just won't get anything, like, at the store at all. And this is what it could stem from, right? So, and we don't even realize it. And it's, like, it's also um, universal laws that come into play that we also don't realize. Like, Like, law of projection, law of reflection, law of attraction, law of cause and effect, law of karma. Like, there's so many, like... There's so many that, like, if you don't know it, it's it's also harder to understand how the universe works. And if you study it, you'll understand better, I promise. Like, okay, for... Oh, I wish I had my papers that I, I was going to do a video on this before. Um, law of projection, okay? Um, for example, it's, like, calling the kettle black. Is that calling the kettle black or whatever? Like, pretty much, like... How you feel about yourself inside is how you're projecting it onto another person. So it pretty much if like, you know, you're judging a person being like, I don't know why sex stuff keeps coming to me. I don't, just, those are just like whatever. Like you're saying somebody's a slut. It's like you either don't have confidence in yourself sexually or, you know, whatever. But another one would be like, oh... I keep getting it. like, oh, she's such a whore. Like, no, I don't know why these are coming to me because it's not the point. I'm not thinking this way lately. Um, <clears throat> but maybe my subconscious mind has those beliefs and that's why it's popping up. And I do. I know I do. Um, but it has changed drastic, drastically. Um, and I can see it within my reality. See, if you can see your reality getting better, that means that you know internally your beliefs are getting broken and you're working on yourself and you might not even know that you are, but it might just be because you start believing in yourself because of maybe a spouse or maybe your friend or whatever. Like maybe you did really good on something and inspired you to go out there and do things that you wouldn't do normally. Um, It can come from any form, in any form. But so yeah, so projecting, okay. Pretty much, okay, so judging, that's what it is. It's pretty much judging somebody on something else 
that you actually judge about yourself. So if somebody's like, oh, she talks so much shit, da 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 it's like you're, you're doing it right now. You're gossiping right now. Like, if it is a gossiping way, but still, like, something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, well, it's pretty much being, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Discriminating, critical, but you do the same exact thing. What's the word? Hold on. What's the word? Crap, I can't think of the word. Oh, man. It's not judgmental. It's another word. Um, deceiving? No. Whatever. So the point is, is that with law of attraction, um, oh, like if you say you're fat, you're just going to keep getting fatter. Um, if you say, if somebody tells you that you cannot have a baby, you're going to believe that you cannot have a baby and not think that there could be a miracle where God could come into the picture and be like, you know what I mean? It's like if somebody, if a doctor tells you that you're going to die within like six months, you have the belief that that will not happen. There's a huge chance that it will not happen. It's our beliefs. It's our beliefs. Like what our beliefs are is what can happen to us. If you believe like just whatever. All right. So this is how a belief from childhood can fuck us up in adulthood. Ready? So your mom or your dad or whoever, a caregiver, they tell you, um, you know, you're in the grocery store and you're little, you're like, I don't know, five or whatever. Because so like from two to seven is when like our brain is the most spongy, like the most, like it, it, it picks up the most crap that's around us and it sponges into us and goes into our subconscious, which, you know, it forms a lot of our beliefs. Anyways, so say you're in the grocery store. And your caregiver, whoever you're with, goes, yeah, you can have whatever. Remember, they say you can have whatever candy you want. Whatever candy, okay? You come back with a big bag of chocolate dove things in or Lindor's, right? As a kid, you do not realize that those are expensive, and the caregiver looks at you and says, are you kidding me right now? You are so greedy. I said you could have some candy and you come back with one of the most expensive things that's so ungrateful. Like, I can't believe you would do that. Now you get nothing. You see it? So it's like somebody, your caregiver or whoever just told you to go get whatever, whatever candy you wanted, whatever, did not put any stipulations on it or restrictions, whatever candy you want. The child comes back with the candy that they want because they could have anything. That's what they were told. They could have anything. They come back with the candy they want and end up turning into a greedy person, ungrateful, get put down, get in trouble, and then get nothing at the end of the day. They don't know they're being greedy, and they're not even being greedy. They just don't know. And they were told they could have anything. So that's where a limited belief could come into play. You get it? So it's like, that's where it could be like, oh, I'm not deserving of that person. They're out of my league. Oh, I'm not deserving of that job because I... And not that type of person. I just won't get it. You know what I mean? Like, it holds you back. Isn't that fucked up? Like, that's crazy. Like, absolutely crazy. It's fucking crazy. But it's like, so, it, it's like we got to rewire our, bra- our brain. And they say the whole, you know, if you do a different routine and do this, blah, 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 like, for 27, 30 days, whatever. Like, it will change, like your thinking and that is true and it will become a routine and you can do that but that doesn't mean it changes your belief on it or your belief system or your emotions towards it like I don't know how else to explain that like yeah you can get yourself into doing something that doesn't mean it's changing your beliefs about it doesn't mean that you're still changing the fact that you think you're worthy of it or you deserve it or you're good enough, you know what I mean? So it's like at the end of the day, yeah, you're you're changing your routine up, but 
do you have the belief that you never achieve anything? Eventually, you'll stop doing that because you're going to get it in your head where you start getting to the point where you are getting into that routine where it's coming and, you know, it's sticking with you. And then all of a sudden your subconscious is like, nope, nope. Like you think you can't accomplish anything. So we're going to make it so you can't. And that's the thing. Like our subconscious is there for survival. It's there. So we do not get hurt. Okay. Because it's like, okay, when something happened to us and we numbed those feelings, our subconscious picked up on that and said, okay, this just happened. I just got hurt. I'm not going to let it happen again, especially if, especially if you don't let yourself experience those feelings. So now I let myself experience feelings all the time or I'll make my, well, not all the time. I can't, I can't say that. Um, but sometimes when I know I have to heal, I will make myself cry. Like I will do something that I know will make me upset about whatever it is I'm trying to heal from. So I heal quicker. Crying is like the best thing when you're trying to heal. And I have always thought that I'm a little bitch if I cry, but I had to change the programming. I got really soft over the years. Really soft. Really soft. I used to be way tough skin, whatever. Um, but that's okay. It's actually better. Um, but yeah, so there was something I was saying. The routine thing. Yeah, so for example, you know, say you were growing up and you had to rely on your parents or for money or whatever, and your your mother or father, whoever your caregiver was, grandparent, aunt, uncle, whatever, and they said, um, you know, it's ridiculous that you can't do things on your own. You're going to end up never being able to succeed in life and you're always going to have to depend on me. I learned in therapy, right? Because this kind of became, unfortunately, I don't want to admit this, but it's whatever because it's just what happened to me. This was my journey. This is what I was told, right? Um, and plus I was doing drugs at the time where I should have been stepping up to the plate. So kind of went backwards on, you know, that and dropped out of college like four times because of not going to blame it on my boyfriends because I chose to do that. And that's another thing. You can't blame anybody for anything. You cannot be the victim because you chose. Like if you were in a bad relationship, you can't tell. Say even my relationship, my 13 year relationship. I always say to people, I cannot blame him for anything. Let me rephrase that. I cannot blame him for anything because I chose to stay in the relationship where I knew I was still getting hurt over and over and over again. Okay? Doesn't mean that outer external experiences do not hurt us that people do to us. Or not even do to us, just do. It just is, okay? You cannot still blame that person because you can always choose your feelings about how you want to feel about the situation. And then, you know, people can be like, oh, well, it really hurt me. How can you just change, you know, your outlook on it or your feelings on it? And it's like you can always change the story. And I told somebody this the other day because they were like, telling me how they went to a class and the people were like telling them like, no, you have to believe you can't blame anybody. It's like, no, yeah, you're not supposed to blame anybody and you have to re take responsibilities for your life and why you are where you are today. Because you chose to feel the things you did. You chose to react the way you reacted. You chose to believe, believe the things you did, which came out of your reality where you are now. Okay. So you can't blame other people for that kind of shit. And when I say you can change the story, you can say to yourself, okay, you know, you can actually grow from the experience. Yeah, you're going to hurt and everything from whatever it was that the person did to hurt you, but you're the one that has the choice of how you want to feel about it. So yeah, okay, say your boyfriend cheated on you. You going to stay with that person? Because 
you really can't blame that person if you're literally going to keep staying with that person and keep getting cheated on and this, that, and the other thing and get treated like crap, which also comes from us not feeling worthy because, or the way you're getting treated is how you feel about yourself and how you feel you deserve to be treated. Okay. That's another thing that really sucks because I look on back in the day of how I let people treat me. It's so sad. Like I, I thought, I thought I deserved that. Like, geez, geez, Linda. But anyways, so you can either take it as pitying yourself and being the victim, like somebody did something to you, or you can take responsibilities for your own feelings, grow confidence from it, and know that you deserve better. So you're changing the story. Rather than feeling bad for yourself, you can look at it and say, this just shows me that I deserve better. Or if this person's cheating on you, this just shows me that, you know, you know, this person's never going to learn, whatever. But it's up to you to be able to be strong enough or to be able to honor your feelings, not be embarrassed by them, not judge them. Because you have every right to feel the way you do, but you can always forgive yourself and change the story. Okay, and it's hard. I'm not going to say I, I'm like a pro at it and I'm like, oh, this person hurt me. Like, oh, you know, but I'm so happy now. Like, I learned the lesson. No, it doesn't happen like that. And that's totally okay. Um, we're human. You know, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to blame people, judge people at some point, you know, and especially... If you're a narcissist and you don't ever take accountability for your shit, then we're to blame. And it goes on us. I don't remember what I was talking about before this. And it was probably good. Hold on. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so. Growing up. I know my parents did the best that they could. And I'm amazing. So, um. It's okay, but my mother did fucking everything for me. And this is why she did, and this is her belief, okay? The reason why she spoiled me and, you know, did all my chores, I never had to do shit. I was a spoiled little brat, okay? Which kind of turns into my reality now that I have to change because I think that everything has to go my way. I think that, you know, when I want it, I need to get it then and there. Like, I, it's not patience, like... When I want it, I want it right there. And I'm a brat about it, okay? And I've learned that self about, I've learned that about myself. And people come into our lives for reasons. Um, they're, and you, they're either your teacher, student, whatever. But they cross your path for a reason. And you are a mirror of them in some type of way. So um, with that being said, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I've had people in my life tell me, you know, you're very pushy when you want something is when you want it, you don't let it roll out like whatever. And it's, it has screwed up things for me. So I've realized that about myself, but, um, and I don't mean to, it's just how I was programmed and I can't blame that on anybody else because obviously people have told me, so could have done something about it. But anyways, so, um, my mom spoiled the shit out of me. I mean, my dad probably did too, but like more of my mom because, you know, she was my mom. So she, you know, did my laundry, brushed my teeth, which she still fucking does to Dawson. Um, you know, she would do everything for me. I had no chores, no chores growing up ever, 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 no chores at all. I didn't even have to put my clothes away. My clothes would already be set out for me before I went to school for the day, church, whatever it was, all right? She still babies Dawson like this, and it really fucking pisses me off because I want Dawson to be way more responsible than I was because I grew up having no responsibilities, so I didn't know how to be responsible. I did not know how to get a job. I did not know how to stand on my own two feet. I did not know 
how to do chores. My mom literally, after I had Dawson, I was living with her when Dawson was like two. And like I moved back in when she, he was like two. And she's like, you have a kid now. You have to do this. You have to do that. And I'm like looking at her like I never had two before. Why the fuck do I have to now? And I didn't even know how. So how the fuck do you expect me to know how to learn, like do this dryer thing? Like, you know what I mean? Or the dishwasher. But at the end of the day, I grew up not having to do shit. So when I grew up, like as an adult, I still felt like I didn't need to do shit and that people would just do things for me. This is not how the, it is at all now. I'm talking about like years ago, like years ago. And I got upset to my, at my mom for doing this, but it's not her fault because she grew up having to do everything for herself. Like she was a newspaper person, like throwing it like, whatever at like 12 like she had to do everything for herself she had to take care of her sisters her younger sisters because she was the oldest sister like so she wanted me to have that freedom she wanted to do everything for me because she didn't get to experience and she knew what it was like that's why I don't let I don't cater to Dawson because I don't want that to happen to him and I should stop saying don't and all that stuff because your subconscious mind does not pick up on those words. So I'm literally saying I want instead of I do not want. Um, anyways, so when I grew up, my mom said to me, you know, you're never going to be able to do anything in life without me. Da, 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 da. So I'm in therapy, right? And I'm telling her this and she goes, well, you were only fulfilling her, her dreams of what she was saying. Not dreams, but what she expected from me is what I wanted to give her. And I felt like in my beliefs, subconsciously, if she said something like that, I felt like I had to make her happy. So subconsciously growing up, that's how I grew up thinking. If she said this, if something said like this, or they expected something out of me, I would do it. She expected me to have to rely on her. So I was just giving her what she wanted. Is that fucked up? I love it. Like, it's hard, obviously, like, not to understand it or, you know, whatever. I mean, it actually kind of is hard to explain uh, that. Uh, whatever. Like, that stuff. Like, being able to give examples. Like, there's other ones, too, where, like, you know, whatever. I, I can't think of it right now. I have, like, a list of it, like, written down of how, like, law of Oh, like, if you say that person's a pain in the ass. Or, no, no, hold on. If you say that person's a pain in the neck, you're going to create a pain in your neck. Like, especially if that person keeps pissing you off. Or for the reason why they're pissing you off and then somebody else does it, which you will attract because you're complaining about it. So you're talking over and over and over about it. So it's going to keep attracting you, attracting, attracting you. And you're going to keep getting pissed off and pissed off about the same exact thing that that person did to you that you keep saying there's a pain in the neck. Change your story. And stop complaining. The more you bring it out into the universe, the more it's going to manifest. So I just wanted to say that because I've been wanting to say it for a long time. And I've been up since like three. <laughs> because we just had a full moon and it's very hard to sleep right now because I usually can sleep like a baby. Imagine. And the full moon energy made a lot of people not be able to sleep. And it's been hard for me to sleep lately. So I know it's the full moon energy. Um, so we're like literally like still passing through it. Like the energy is literally like just going through right now. Yesterday was a, a day. <sighs> yeah. So I hope somebody learned something by this. Um, I do know a lot of this. A lot. And I do have, I have so much to offer to the world. Like so much wisdom. So much knowledge. Like whatever. But. I don't know how to put it out there because I don't know what to say. So it's like if people ask me questions, I know how to answer them. As long as I really didn't know how to answer them. But it's like, I know so much about this shit. But, yeah. I'm going to go. F oh, shift your paradigm too. That's a huge resetter for your brain. Huge reset. Huge reset. Shift your paradigm. Affirmations. Affirmations will not work unless you believe them, though. So, you know how, like, you're listening to a song and you somehow, in your mind, already know all the words? That's how you can do. Uh, start off with 
doing affirmations if you don't believe them. You keep hearing it over and over and over in your head. Let it be like a song and let the affirmation subconsciously go over and over and over because our subconscious already knows everything. Akashic records, like, they already know everything. And if we have past lives that have not been healed of traumas, that also comes into play. Say you were a witch and you got persecuted for people thinking that you were lying. Are you going to fucking want to... How are you going to feel if you have to lie? You're going to feel like you're getting persecuted. Like, stuff like that. You know, if you feel very conscious about your body or you don't like showing it very much, you were probably a nun. Those kinds of things. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. That's all I have to say. You guys have a good day. I'm going to watch some Bob Proctor. <laughs> all right. Bye.